the first question is, uh, obviously I know that you've worked with the uh, 2001 original series, well, the adaptation, and so what were you kind of hoping to bring back that was such a success from that show, and what are you hoping to kind of update from that, and what are you hoping to bring to the character? Well, we're both really big fans of Ben's original work, mm -hmm. of the graphic novel that he created, the animated series that he created, and when we did the first show for Fox, that was the thing. Like, Ben's language, his voice, it's so unique. So we tried to do a, a great version of it then. I think we were a little ahead of our time. It was before all the Marvel movies took off. I think people didn't really understand, you know, A, you know, exactly what the show is, what the tick was, and, uh, you know, I think, too, that, you know, in this world of sort of, like, our show parodying a little bit of that world, th that world wasn't as enormous as it is now. Um, so I think we, s you know, the world caught up, and now doing the tick this version is great. Although, I will say, We've really developed a great fan base of people who love that original show. So, you know, now that we have this on the air, it's sort of like, you know, great to see people come to this show having loved that show in the past. Yeah, and I, I was a huge, huge fan of that show. So I felt very uh, overwhelmed and intimidated by the idea of trying to take on the role. But Ben had outlined very clearly what he wanted to add to the character, which was a new sort of emotional depth and psychological kind of foundation for him. Because he had always been more of a comedic archetype. And he wanted to try to make a show with a little more emotional resonance. So Ben outlined for me very clearly the very difficult task I had ahead of me of, of um, what he wanted to add to this character. And then for me, it was just trying to thread that needle while holding on to everything that the fans like myself love about the previous versions of Arthur. Well, and so kind of going off of that, it's obviously, it's got a bleaker storyline to it, but also still the classic kind of comedy parts to it. Do you find balancing that hard, or do you find that that has added a little bit more to the dynamic of the show? That, that balance is my favorite thing in the world. It's my favorite thing to see or read as like a, a viewer uh, of uh, media, and it's my favorite thing to do creatively. And when I met with Ben, when he was starting to consider me for the part, that was the whole spiel I gave him, was just, look, this is what I'm obsessed with, is trying to figure out how sad you can make comedy and how funny you can make drama. And if that's what you're looking for in this character, I will be relentless in trying to figure out that line. Yeah, I mean, our first season is really Arthur's journey you know, to becoming a hero. And I think you know, it's a more grounded version, which I think makes for a great opportunity for Peter Serafinowicz and the Tick character this, you know, this season because he's just, you know, doesn't fit perfectly into this world, you know, and Arthur has to come to grips with that. So their relationship, their dynamic, I think is even better than what we had previous. And it's also fun just as an actor to be put in a position where depending on who I'm doing a scene with, Sometimes I'm the straight man to the tick who's a super big comedic character and sometimes I'm in a more serious grounded scene with like my family members who are not superheroes and I'm the funny one in relation to them being the straight people. It gives you a lot of space to play. It's true. It's like Arthur's leaning out and the tick is leaning into everything. Let's just go. And Arthur's, why? Why are we going? Let's stay. Awesome. And so uh, my next question is, how do you think uh, Amazon and kind of that being the network that you're going through, how has that influenced the way that the show is being produced or received or the, also the kind of the following that is tuning in each week? Well, the great thing is we had a great bridge. Sony was our studio from the past version to now, and they always were su supportive of Glenn Adelman and, uh, and, and uh, Chris, Parnell. Chris Parnell. So fabulous in terms of like they really got it. Chris Parnell wrote a spec script for The Tick back in the day. So we had that, and then when we went to Amazon, because we went and pitched everywhere, Ben and I, and Amazon really got it. And the most important thing, they got the show, but they really got Ben. They were fans of his. They were fans of his the way, you know, Griffin and I are. So to be in business with people like that, so supportive from, you know, production, from development to production, to marketing, to press, everything, they get the show. That's that's why it's there's the perfect network for it. And they allowed us to do what we want, to make the kind of show and the characters that Ben really saw for this episode, for this season. I think support is the big word because I've been through the sort of machinery of 
you know, you get cast on a pilot and the script is so funny and you've got this take on the character and everyone loves it and then the network gets really scared about everything. They start second guessing everything and going, well, we get it, but that's a little too weird. This might alienate people. And then you end up with this watered down thing and everyone's so frustrated that you didn't get to make the show you want to make. And I kept on waiting every day for someone to come tap me on the shoulder and be like, you can't do that, come on go bigger, go louder, go sillier, whatever it is, especially when we're going to the real dark places. And they never did, which is astonishing. They fully trusted this version of the show, which is a very weird show to begin with, made weirder by deviating so much so from much. the tone of what people expect out of the tech. And uh, it's, it's insane that they, they trusted it's us. True. Yeah. yeah. Is Arthur losing his mind or not? You know, I mean, just the psychology of the show is so different. I think so much better, and they supported me all the way. Well, I'm so glad that they did. Um, my final question is just what are you the most excited about as the series continues? I, I think the thing that's really fun in these next six episodes that are coming out, the first half of the season, we had to lay out a lot of that sort of track in terms of really building like an attic and a basement on the character and making them sort of deeper and building these larger kind of emotional arcs for them but now that all of that's done I think in these next six episodes we get to a lot of the crazier elements of the tick world that fans know not you know the specific redoing storylines it's all new stuff that's going to be super surprising but just the absurdity of like robots and talking dogs and crazy action insane visuals I mean we really just kind of go for it now uh, that we've sort of built a foundation we can just go bananas first six episodes was about building you know our world and just in the second half all hell breaks loose it's fun it's really fun i'm so excited to see it thank you so much for thank your you. time thank yeah. you